What's going on, Infected? It's Will for the Quarantine, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a game that was sent to me from AEG to review, and it's actually an expansion to a game for Mystic Vale, The Twilight Garden. Now, if you don't know what Mystic Vale is, uh, you can actually see it kind of buried behind here. Uh, Mystic Vale is a deck crafting game, kind of. Uh, so basically, it's a deck builder, but rather than, as you can see here, I'm a big fan of deck builders. Uh, and in a normal deck builder, you're going to be adding cards to your deck and you're usually getting rid of the crappy cards so that way your deck is a little more efficient and does what you want it to do. Whether it's uh, is super good economy, or maybe it's drawing through all your deck, maybe it's always getting uh, one or two cards that you need to, to combo off things. So there's a lot of different strategies behind a deck builder with a little bit of luck involved. Now where Mystic Veil is a little different is instead of adding new cards to your deck, you always have the same... I'm wanting to say it's 20 cards. You always have the same number of cards. You will never add more cards to your deck. But what you do is because all the cards are sleeved and all of the cards in the game, uh, aside from your starting deck, are clear. So you're gonna add cards to your cards. You're gonna make them better. So I'm not gonna be explaining really how to play the game, but that's the, the difference between uh, Mystic Veil's deck builder and all of these other deck builders. So on your turn, rather than having a hand of cards and you just play them in a certain order and do what they say, you're gonna be pushing your luck by revealing cards until you have so many of these little red symbols, and then you can choose to push your luck more, or you can choose to just get what you got, whether it's a crappy hand or whether it's really good and you need maybe one more, do you push your luck more? Uh, but that's really all I'm going to explain about the rules. Let's head over to the overview. So, Twilight Garden, what do I think about it? So, a long time ago, uh, AEG sent me Mystic Veil vale to review. And I thoroughly enjoyed the game, because again, as you see here, this isn't even all of my deck builders, I just didn't feel like stacking them up super high. I just got a bunch of my favorites and put them out here, and again, these aren't even all of my favorites, I have a bunch over here. Uh, but, with Mystic Veil, vale, I, I love the fact that it takes that basic principle of adding crap to your deck and you can get rid of older stuff, kind of. Uh, and it takes that and adds that to this game. Now, there's not a lot of getting rid of old cards, except with this this expansion. So with this expansion specifically, all I've ever played prior to this is the base game. And so I got this, and we played it with just the expansion, and then we played it a couple times mixed with the base set. And I have to say, it is fantastic. It adds uh, several other new things. Now, this is my first venture into the leader's mechanic, which is really, really cool. It gives you one super powerful card uh, that starts off all right and then gets better. And some of them, they keep flipping back and forth. Like when you use them, they flip and now you have to re-upgrade them again, but their powers are usually really, really strong and that's why they balance that out. Uh, but another really cool thing that this one adds, which again, I don't know if the other expansions add, is uh, negative victory points. You're gonna get these black uh, victory point markers rather than the blue ones. And those are so cool because some of these cards are really strong, but they also give you those tokens. And then some of them also give you negative victory points at the end of the game. So you'll have some cards that are like, oh, this one's worth four victory points, but it's also worth minus two. And you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, why not just make it worth two instead? Well, because some cards will turn like all of your veil cards into positives. So all your negatives become positives and those cards just become insanely powerful. Um, so that that's really, really cool. And then, but if you play it by itself, it seems to be, the scores still get pretty, pretty high, uh, but there's just a lot of those negative tokens going around and the scores aren't as high as they probably could be. Uh, so by mixing it with the base game, it's gonna, it dilutes it a little bit in a good way. Now I love this one so much that I actually went out and bought every expansion for Mystic Veil. Vale. Uh, now I haven't gotten to play with all of them yet. This actually just showed up today and I haven't even mixed this in with this yet. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I enjoyed this one so much and it reminded me, 
how much I enjoy Mystic Veil. Vale. Now, Mystic Veil vale ha- wasn't one of the games that I got to bring to the table very often. Uh, after I reviewed it, I think I played it a few more times, you know, here and there after the review. Uh, but then it kind of went back into my shelf and fell along the wayside. Uh, getting this in the mail to review reminded me just how much I loved this game. This game is so much fun. Uh, and it's so unique and refreshing. Uh, I played it with uh, several people, one of them which absolutely adores deck builders. They're his favorite one. I think he's pretty much played every deck builder that's out. Uh, and this ranks among one of his favorites because it's it takes that core mechanic that's just so loved and so good and it just it adds a twist to it. You're never, very seldomly, are you going to get rid of cards, which that's one of the things I love about this one is it adds, and again, I don't know if the other expansions add this, but it adds, uh, I can take one of my cards, if it has this this one guy on it, and I could take it at the end of my turn, and instead of going to the discard pile, it goes to your discard pile, and, or at the bottom of your deck instead. So it's going to slowly circle the battlefield, but it allows you a couple rounds of not having this crappy card in your, in your deck, which could be really good or really bad, depending on how far through your deck you are, and how many times you're going to get to reshuffle, stuff like that. Uh, but it, it's a really interesting mechanic. Uh, however, there are a few things that some people are not going to like about this. Of course, it is a deck builder, uh, so if you, there is going to be that luck aspect of the game. Now, there's a good bit of mitigation and push your luck here, but just know that there, it, it's cards. You're going to have to deal with some variation of luck. Another negative we found, which again, this could be balanced out with some of the other expansions and stuff when you mix them thoroughly, uh, but there are a few cards cards that are questionably overpowered. Uh, For example, there is a card called the Crone. I feel it's a little too strong, so what happens is when it goes from the top of your deck out uh, onto the the battlefield, um, you get your played effect. And that played effect is you just get four points from the, the outside of the game. It's not even like the end game pool. But if you then get to your harvest phase, you just get my two of the black tokens, which is, you know, their negative victory points. So effectively you get net plus two. But if you do that and then you just force yourself to burst, I mean, unless of course, you know, other, other, other things, unless of course you have to buy something or, or whatever. But if you just push yourself to burst, you just got four points that turn um, for nothing. So if you wind up getting two or, th- or even all three of these, you could rack up a lot of points. You just you skip one turn just to get four points with very minimal work. So that that's definitely one thing. There's a few other cards that are questionably strong, uh, but again, they could be balanced out by other cards from the other expansion. And as I mentioned, I played this uh, both as a standalone and mixed. I definitely feel uh, you're gonna want to mix this one with. Uh, the the other expansions and the base sets and everything. I don't feel that it should be played alone because all of the cards in this set uh, have a very specific theme. Well, except for the leaders, really. But all the, the cards itself, they usually revolve around, you know, get, you get negative victory points for some really strong abilities or um, you they're just, they give just negative points at the end of the game. And they, they all follow this a very similar theme. Uh, I feel that the expansion is much, 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 much better if you mix it with whether it's a, just the base game, just the exp- some expansions, not just, but you get the idea, some expansions, so on and so forth. I feel that it winds up making it much, much better. And lastly, another issue that, uh, minor issue that we had with the game, which is more of an issue with normal deck builders, is it is one of those games that uh, if, you're, if you're falling behind, it's gonna be really hard to catch back up. You're probably gonna keep falling behind uh, because your, you know, my deck is efficient. It's I'm drawing most of my cards or whatever. I'm, I'm my deck is just it's chugging along. It's an engine builder. My engine is up and it's running. You're still, you know, through luck of the cards that come out that allow you to buy or whatever. Luck just hasn't been with you, so you're struggling and falling behind, and you're just you're having a hell of a time catching up. Uh, in most games that we play, there's usually a big gap between who's in first and who's in last because of that. Uh, very seldomly are the scores close. It's usually in like a two-player game, but in a three or more player game, there's usually somebody that's very, very fall, far behind. They were really probably just playing just to, to get the game moving. They knew they were going to lose. But uh, just know that they... That's usually a problem with most deck builders, uh, but that comes with experience, what cards to buy, so on and so forth. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time in the quarantine.